Okay. So, Dr. Ratio, here's what you need to know. First of all, just by the way, chat, for 2.0 characters, Sparkle and Black Swan, I will make a full guide on my YouTube main channel. We're going back to it. But for now, I'm still, you know, casually playing. So, Dr. Ratio, here's what you need to know after playing him. First of all, he will spam full of attacks and do a consistent amount of damage. He's hunt, which means mostly single target, but his full of attacks can kind of bounce between enemies if you kill one. So, what I mean is the following. You skill, and then it basically will be guaranteed to do a follow-up attack. It's not technically guaranteed, it's 40% chance, but then it gains 20% chance for each debuff the enemy has, meaning that if the enemy has three debuffs, it's guaranteed to follow attack. Now, you're almost always going to have this if you play and build a team correctly, which is easy. First of all, Dr. Ratio himself applies one debuff to an enemy with uh, this right here, where you skill, effect res. It's not 100% chance, 100% base chance, which means you need, I think, 67 EHR. Well, you don't want to build EHR on him, but that's what you would need to 100% it. It's fine if you like you want to build damage still because he's a DPS, but eventually, like you will get this effect res reduce, which is one debuff, and then you'll run supports that have way more debuffs. You'll get way more than three, but with three, you have 100% chance to follow up attack, which is the majority majority of your damage or a big chunk at least it has a way higher scaling for reference than a skill so every time you skill fall up attack a single target now if you skill and the enemy you're attacking dies it will fall up attack a random other enemy which is good because it kind of alleviates his single targetness because let's say you kill one it'll then kill the other with your fall up attack or hit the other instead of just it being wasted ultimate applies a mark and then anytime an ally hits it does single target damage whatever and then anytime an ally hits or the next two times your ally hits it'll shoot a follow up attack which is nice and his weakness break is fucking insane by the way, his skill plus follow-up attack together does 90 toughness uh, damage or whatever it's called. And then you could also use Ron May for more or just in general, it's just really good. Ultimate also will let you follow-up attack passively. He also has some passives that are very important to build around. This one, deduction and summation. Both of these give you buffs based on how many debuffs the enemy has. Because of this, here's what you need to know, okay? First of all, if you have five debuffs, you get 50% damage bonus. If you have three debuffs, you get 30% damage bonus. If you have less than three, you don't get any. So you want at least three debuffs minimum. Ideally, Really five or six because of this, but we'll get there later. But if you have five, 50% damage bonus, which is huge uh, to that target by Dr. Ratio, three is the minimum for 30%. Now for this other talent, basically, however much debuffs the enemy has when you use your skill, you will gain crit rate and crit damage. Now, from my understanding, this talent does stack, which means you don't actually need six different debuffs because if you use it against an enemy that has two debuffs and then four debuffs or three and then three or whatever the fuck, you'll get six stacks. So it's very easy. But basically five debuffs is ideal because you get 50% damage bonus, at least three for 30%. Outside of that, not much else. Keep in mind, you get a lot of crit rate through your traces and you also get an additional up to 15% crit rate and 30% crit damage for free as you play. So be mindful of that with your build. Okay, how do you build this fucker? Now, I wish I had the quantum set equipped to jump scare you, but it's basically like this. This is Jing Liu, but this is basically how you build him in a lot of his teams. Why? Because a lot of supports, Nihility supports you run with him, you're probably gonna run at least Silver Wolf or Pila. They both reduce defense of enemies. Additionally, his light cone also ignores defense. When you have things like this, the more def shred or def ignore you have, the better, the more efficient it is. So the four piece of the quantum set is unironically potentially his best in slot in those situations. It's not always best in slot, but it can be and it's also better against quantum weak enemies, even though the quantum damage is wasted because you ignore either 10% or 20% defense, which is good. This set is actually stupid good and I wish I farmed it more. Your best installed set will either be four quantum or four wasteland or two piece, two piece. Those are basically the ways to go. And then the two pieces could be anything. For more information, quantum is best installed if you have defense shredding or def ignore, whatever you want to call it, like Silver Wolf or Pila or Signature Lycone because the more you have, the better. And then two piece, two piece is a lot easier to build and not far behind. And similar to two piece, two piece is four piece wasteland which gets better if you can make use of the 20% crit damage against imprisoned enemies. A lot of times you won't be able to, but if you weakness break, imaginary weak enemies, or have Welt's ult, whatever, then you can. And then even if not, 10% crit rate is enough. It's kind of like another two piece to where the four piece is still good. And generally the like quote unquote go to, but it's not really the most efficient set to farm. We might get new sets in 2.0, who knows? So I kind of don't recommend going all the way for four piece, but you can, and it's potentially his best in slot. Two piece, two piece is very similar though. And four piece quantum is best in slot in a lot of situations where you have def reduction. With that in mind, four piece follow up attack is viable too. It's just worse than two piece, two piece. It's like five to 7% worse, but it's fine. It, it depends on some stats. So yeah, I wish I had quantum though, but my only good quantum sets on Jing Liu, haha. <laughs> but the builds are pretty similar. In fact, for planner, there's three sets that are basically the same. Inert South Soto, fucking Glamoth and Space Stealing Station. Glamoth can be the best if you have enough speed, either 135 or 160. Even just 135 is enough because you get 12% damage and 12% attack. Inert South Soto, very, very, very similar because you get crit rate, ultimate, and especially follow up attack damage. So both of these are basically as good. Go on substats. Same with uh, space stealing station.
penetration, 24% attack, also very similar. So just go based on substats. Stat wise, super easy. You want crit, you want speed. Don't, I mean, okay, you can go attack. Attack's fine, but speed is just great on DPSs. But you know, crit, body, crit rate or crit damage, speed or attack, imaginary, and then attack rope. I like speed boots, especially if you can go for a break point like one, three, four, but even just enough speed is enough speed. And for your body, crit rate and crit damage is fine, but crit damage is like quote unquote easier because you get a lot of crit rate through your traces and this passive. But like me personally with this crit damage light cone, I still need a crit rate body. So just go whichever one you need. Cool. Light cone wise, very easy. There's like three options outside of that. Don't talk to me. Either you get his signature or you use Topaz's light cone or you use the free to play S5 cruising in the stellar sea. Amazing free to play light cone you get from her to shop, which is what I was using. I just got forced, not forced, but uh, uh, influenced into pulling for his signature. But I was planning on using cruising in the stellar sea. Very good. Only like 12%, 10 to 15 worse than his signature because it gives you 16% crit rate all the time. Then you also get up to 16% more crit rate against low HP enemies and attack a 40% attack when you defeat an enemy. So really good. However, the only light cones better than this are his signature, which is pretty insane, or Topaz's light cone, which is pretty good, but not as good as signature. His signature is really good because it gives you a ton of crit damage. You get 20% and then up to eight times three, 24% more, but just basically always. I say up to because it scales on debuffs, but you're always going to have that. And then if that wasn't enough, you also ignore defense, which is huge and increases all of your damage by 36 and you ignore defense, which is huge. So it's really good. But yeah, this is a really good light cone. I don't think it's needed because one, you could use Topaz's and two, you can use this really good free to play Herda store light cone. But this light cone is you can only get one and it's good on like every hunt character. So I understand that it may be hard, but I like it. So either this or this are the two, either Baptism of Pure Thought or Topaz's or Cruising the Celestia. Alternatives include the Dan Hung light cone, only silence remains, or technically the Battle Pass one or technically Seelie's light cone, but they're all a bit worse. Cool. I the Okay, we're not going to talk about every Eidolon because I'm not a whale, but E1, all E1 does is 10 crit rate, 20 crit damage, literally nothing else. That's not bad. It's just more stats. It's not more fun. It's not more gameplay. It's just a bit more stats. 10 crit rate, 20 crit damage. It's fine. It's a lot of stats. Yeah, that's 40 crit value. That's a lot of stats, but that's it. So if you want it, you can get it. I like the light cone more. The light cone is a lot of damage. I would choose the light cone over E1. It's also a flexible light cone because it's not something cringe that gives you, well, the only thing is, yeah, the def ignore is only for follow up attacks. I do want to specify that. So that's really good for him. But then for other hunt characters, it's like if they fall of attack, it's great. And even if they don't, you get damage dealt increased by 36% and 20% plus up to another 24% crit damage. So I think it's just good. Yeah, good light on. I like it more than you want. Teams are pretty easy, except they're not, except they are. No, they're not. I mean, they are, but they're not. They are, but you have a lot of options. So you're running him with a debuffer, basically always, because you want to have at least ideally five debuffs. I say at least three, but ideally five. Well, yeah, three to five, because you want to be able to max out his uh, passives. Parties is typically going to be one healer, one debuffer buffer and then flex. Flex could either be another buffer or another debuffer or another follow-up attacker, basically just Topaz. Regarding debuffers, I want to say that the resolution shines as pearls of sweat. Basically just the naked backlight cone can give you just a free debuff, the ensnare one. It only lasts one turn, but it's very easy to proc and it reduces the defense of enemies. So it's really good. Now, obviously this light cone, the before the trail mission starts is broken, but if you can use this on like, let's say Pila and you need another debuff, it is quite good. So keep that in mind if you need another one. With that said, Nihility character like Silver Wolf, great. Silver Wolf gives like literally a million different debuffs. She has the bugs, she has the death reduction, she can implant a weakness, her skill has one. Like there's literally so many debuffs that Silver Wolf alone is usually enough on top of Doctor Ratio is one and he reduces effect res. Outside of that, Pila can be good. She can give like, she gives one with her ult that's vulnerable, like defense shred. Uh, well, okay, that's the main one. The other ones you can get are the back light cone resolution. If you have it, that can make it two. And if you have E4, this makes it to where you can use your skill for another debuff. It makes you use a skill point, but you can do it if you want another debuff, so you can't get up to three, but usually it's one. Outside of that, Guine Fen, I need to level her, but I know she's good with him because she has decent damage and increases your damage as a vulnerability debuff, has another debuff, just a lot of shit in her kit that helps you. I need to level mine so that I can actually use her, but I, uh, yeah, she'll, she'll, yeah. Guine Fen, really good because her damage is decent and she gives you a lot of good buffs. Also, you can run the same backlight cone if you want another one, and her E1 also gives her another debuff. Yes, another debuff, so that can be another one if you have E1, and just like DOT stuff, so she can be pretty good to have in the team as well. Outside of the debuffers though, there's great buffers. In fact, Ranme can be both. She gives you one debuff. It's on her ult. Future Zox here. Yeah, this debuff works. You might not have 100% uptime on your ult, but when you use it, it debuffs enemies. So it works really good. On top of just being one of the most broken supports in the game, great harmony. So I recommend her. She also gives you weakness break efficiency, which is huge. On top of his already really good break. So Ranme is very good. Ting Yun can be good for energy and attack if you need a buffer and already have enough debuffs. Like the characters
characters I'm talking about now are if you have enough debuffs. So like Ting Yun, you could also use Bronya. Bronya uses a lot of skill points. Like that's the main problem. But there's two ways to go around this. One, you have a really skill point efficient team. For example, Luotra, Pila, or something like that. Or two, and especially if your Bronya is built very fast, she can be skill point neutral or a bit more skill point efficient. You can like basic attack and then your ratio goes and then you go again on Bronya and then you use your skill. You can do like basic into skill. So there's ways to do that if you have like 160 speed or high. It depends on your DPS's speed as well, but there's ways to do it with fast Bronya. Like I know for me, I play 100 speed blade and 170 Bronya and it lines up. But anyways, that's mostly it for teams. Your last slot's gonna be a healer. The good healers are always the same. Literally always the same in every team, always, no matter what, always, basically. With a few exceptions, but no one cares about the exceptions. Luotra, great, skill point efficient. Huoho, great, skill point efficient. You have to use your skill to heal, but still, alt gives energy, which is the main upside, and attack. So you get energy and attack on top of just pretty good healing. Fushuan, also pretty skill point efficient, and gives you crit rate while also having like CC resistance stuff. And oh yeah, also you get cleanses from these characters. So you get cleanse plus healing plus skill point efficiency with Luotra. Energy and attack with Hoho and crit rate with Fushuan. Alternatives that are not five stars include Lynx, who's a good free to play healer and cleanser, or, well, technically a five star, but Japard, who I don't have, or, I mean, I guess Natasha, but yeah, I think Lynx is great. Regarding Asta, she gets better with Eidolons. I think she's fine. She gives you speed, gives you attack, can run a light cone, for example, a debuff one, or can go on to give her energy, like meshing cogs. She's fine. Now, I will say, Tobaz is also really good. Tobaz is great with Dr. Ratio. So she gives you, okay, so she has good damage and she will buff your follow-up attack damage with Dr. Ratio. They have good synergy with each other. Topaz can proc, which procs like Dr. Ratio's follow-up attack through his ult. Topaz just has good synergy with follow-up attackers in general. Will buff your damage and will also debuff enemies through her, uh, where is it? It's the vulnerability thing. Yeah, this one. The proof of death thing, it increases the damage that the enemies take from follow-up attacks. So she has one debuff. If you want more debuffs, you can get her signature like that's one more and her E1, that's another. You can get up to three, but but even just base Topaz is good. More damage and one debuff. Uh, the only other debuff I didn't mention is Welt. Welt works. He's just very skill point hungry. Like you don't need to spam skill every turn, but you do want a skill because it does count as a debuff and then you can get a debuff from his ult. It could slow and you can also imprison. Welt is fine. It's just very skill point hungry. I don't like him as much as the others, but I think he works. That's all. Trace priority should be talent and then skill and then ult. Just given how much you increase from each and then your follow attacks is the main part of your kit. Like talents is the most important. Okay, that's all. Does Razor need Bennett Shang Ling? I will find you. It's fine. Okay. Okay. I think I'm gonna not attack this enemy at all until I reduce his defense with uh, Silver Wolf. So that I'm not wasting the follow-up attacks from Dr. Ratio's ult. I don't know if that's... Five head or zero head? It's either five head or negative head. How many debuffs does he have? Six, I don't need to apply more. So we're gonna basic attack, th no, skill. Oh, I'm a genius. We're gonna skill this guy, ult, the middle dude, reduce his defense, trigger ratios, follow attack. Skill, follow up attack. Ting Yun basic is gonna proc the follow attack. He's dead, mamma mia. He's a genius. He's just a genius. Like, he's literally just a genius. If you kill my Ting Yun, I- Okay, thank you, Lotra. Okay. Ulting on Lotra seems dumb here, so we're not going to. Skilling on Silver Wolf seems ideal. Skilling on Ratio seems necessary. And now I believe that if I ult, I could clear in a cycle. I could save this cycle if I ult, or I could save my ult and clear next cycle. It's a lose-lose either way. I think I should save my ult for Kafka personally. Okay, if I ult, I save a cycle, but then Kafka fucks me. Do I want Kafka to fuck me? Yes, but I... No, but we need to skill, because we only kill him if we ult and basic on Ting Yun. Okay, this is my theory. We only kill him if we ult and then basic on Ting Yun to trigger a follow-up attack. But it's not worth because our skill is, has no uptime right now. There's zero out of three. So I think we need to skill. I think we let the cycle go. It is what it is. It is what it is. Unless the wolf literally dies here. Yeah, this is fine. Let's build our skill points. Let's just have a good time. Party rockers in the house tonight. Everybody just have a good time. If this guy doesn't die, the psych- like, Okay, it's a yo. Why is he not about to die? Bro, what? Listen, I made the wrong decision. I should have just ulted. It's fine. It's fine. 
I don't know why I didn't think you ult there either, actually. I should think you ulted. This is going terrible. This is going terrible. It's still gonna clear, but I listen, it, let this be a lesson in no dude, sometimes in life, things don't go your way. Okay? But that's fine. Things don't always go your way, and that's okay. Let this be a lesson, that's fine. You have to improvise, you have to adapt, and you have to overcome. And that's what we're doing right now. 64, we're about to do way more, watch this. Implant? Please? Okay, that's good. That's fine. That's fine. You fucker. I'm not gonna use my skill, I'm gonna attack. Okay, uh, I'm gonna be greedy. I'm gonna first alt on Lucha. I meant to say Doctor Ratio. We're still buffed by Ting Yun. The enemy should still be debuffed. If I press Z, seven debuffs. So the alt here should be good. We're gonna alt. Gonna do some damage. Now we're gonna launch a follow up attack. I could cleanse my Silver Wolf if I want to be safe, but I'd rather be sorry than being safe. This is probably really dumb, but this helps me break Kafka. I should probably just cleanse. I'm not gonna cleanse. We're gonna do this. Okay, then we're gonna skill. Fall up attack. Fuck. <laughs> okay, it is what it is. Uh, it's fine. I could have just cleansed my Silver Wolf. Probably should have. That's fine. Buff him again. Only get hit once here. Well, twice. That's fine. We don't die. Easy, easy, easy. Alt. And then we launch a full attack. Doctor Ratio. How much, how much, how much? 64k! 89! Not bad. 41? Oh, I didn't crit! 32 no crit! No! Oh, we didn't crit! That would've been over 100. I promise that would've been over 100. Wait, should I have killed Kafka? I don't want to use my alt mark on her, though. It felt wasted. It actually felt wasted to do that. Uh, I think this was smart. If I don't die, it was smart. I might die. If I die, it wasn't smart. But if I don't die, I think this is a play. And we should weakness break here. Yeah, we break him. Watch this. Watch this. 100k fall attack damage. Or your money back guaranteed. 86. Okay, money back guaranteed. Uh, we're gonna basic. This is basic. Doesn't matter. It's fine. Yep, Kafka's dead. Okay, watch this. Boom. Lutra. Ratio? 39? Crit, 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 crit! 86. Okay, we're always doing 86. Hi, right, we win! Nice! Party rockers in the house tonight. Hello? Is this thing on? Um, can you, can you hear me? Um, he hello? Excuse me? Ratio did 163k on auto, AI better than you. Wait, is that actually true? 